What's up, Hub? It's Mark uh, here with another devotional for the week. Uh, last week, if you were with us, that we were able to cap off our Philippians study uh, with part 10 um, in Philippians. So 10 weeks in Philippians is incredible. I hope you're able to catch it. If not, it's all there on YouTube and Facebook and Instagram, and you can find it wherever you are. But uh, before we wrap this up totally, I wanted to spend one week just kind of thinking about um, looking back at Philippians and what we can learn. And I've got a special guest that I want to uh, speak into that for just a moment, but keep up with us next week. We're going to kick off a brand new series. So get excited about that. That's going to be something that we kick off next week. But before we start that, I want to introduce to you our special guest for this week. All right. Well, we got a guest, very, very esteemed guest, Pastor Greg in the house. Man, thank you so much for taking the time just to spend some time with the Siena students. How's it going? Oh man, I'm so glad, Mark, to be with you. And I love Siena. I got to be there with you on the opening reunion weekend and so many great things. So it's it's good. Everything's good. We're doing well. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, uh, one of the things that I wanted to uh, ask you about was, um, I know that during quarantine and, and at the beginning of all this, well, we, we talked through Philippians a lot and, and we actually did that in our student ministry as well. And so one of the things that I just wanted to ask you about as you were studying through it, what was your heart? Um, for, for, for choosing Philippians chapter four specifically kind of in, in, in the quarantine time. Yeah. You know, during that quarantine time, you got so many great passages in Philippians chapter four and just the aspect of joy. And here's Paul in a prison cell writing about the joy that we can have in the Lord and that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. I mean, just so many great things. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. I mean, just so many things. And we've, kind of went into prison now ours was we were glamping instead of camping by being in our homes with computers and tvs and all that so i don't want to say we were in prison but we were in a confined space and to be able to have joy in the midst of that that was what i was trying to get at and then to it we were trying to finish philippians because we had done one and then we'd done two and it was kind of this uh uh, dis, disjointed thing. You know, it's funny, Mark, is I, I did not actually finish Philippians. We still have one more message to go. Okay. And I don't think I'm going to do it. It's on, on giving. So it, students, I didn't think that my, you know, last messages and all that's going on should be on giving, you know, <laughs> so, uh, so we'll just, we'll just hold that one for later. So y'all finished and I didn't, but that's why I wanted to get into Philippians for joy on the journey, all things going to Christ, everything that we have and, and to be able to release it to him. That's awesome. So what are some times, so joy in the journey, we're in, we're in kind of, um, you know, like you said, we're glamping, like we've got internet and coffee and, and all that kind of stuff, but throughout your life, what are, what have been maybe some times where you've had to kind of choose joy in tough circumstances? What, what's that been like for you? You know, um, the one that, that I'll give that I think uh, you students may connect with the most. I remember when I first came to Christ, I was a junior in high school and I was, I was unfortunately doing a lot of partying and craziness. Then hmm. I came to Christ and all of my friends, quote unquote, basically went, what, what's he doing? I heard people talking bad about me. I heard people, you know, kind of say, well, we're going to get Greg to come back and do bad stuff again, type of thing. And that was a time I had to really choose the joy of the Lord, the joy of doing the right thing. Sometimes as a student, um, we want to do the happiness of what everybody's doing, but there's a joy in what God wants you to do. And yeah. so it, it's going to cost you a couple Friday nights, you know, and there's going to be some times you don't get to hang out with everybody. And so that's one that I think in particular in that season of my life was really um, crucial. Uh, one similar, um, there are two that would be similar. Uh, just real quickly. I, I, when I uh, first went to college, you know, I did, you just got to make new friends. And so you got to find the joy of the Lord to be able to find that group. It's the first time you hadn't gone to all these grades together with all these people. Mm -hmm. When I graduated college and I stayed doing breakaway, that was kind of a lonely time for me too, that I had to have the joy of the Lord. All my friends left to go do, you know, the jobs and I stayed, but now I look back 30 years later, look at what God's done through that ministry. If I wouldn't have stayed in that hard time and found the joy of the Lord. One of my favorite verses is Nehemiah um, 8, 10. It says, may the joy of the Lord be your strength. Mm. So, it's, it's through that and joy comes in hard times at, at, at times. So you're, I mean, you're really kind of showing us too that adults got to learn how to choose joy as well. Like it's different seasons. There seems to be different ways that we're having to choose joy. So it's not, you know, you become a Christian and 
everything's up and to the right. Sometimes you gotta yeah. choose joy and difficulty. Yeah. You do. And and here's the bad news, students. It gets harder. <laughs> it's true. It's true. You know, you're, you're at one of the most easiest times. Uh, so it just gets hard. But if you learn these principles now, yeah. you'll be able, it's kind of like lifting weights. You know, if you can't curl 10 pounds, how are you going to curl 15 pounds? But you do 10 enough, then you get to 15, you get to 20, you know, on it goes. So that's, that's how God does in life. He's working on us and in us, you know, before he's working through us. That's good. Well, let me ask you this. If you had to look our students right in the eye, and I know that we're all kind of in separate places and, and all this kind of stuff. You said, man, Sienna students, here's what's on my heart for you for, for this summer, for the upcoming school year, whatever it looks like, what would you, what would you share with our students? Should I lean into my camera? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> uh, Sienna students looking right in the camera to tell you, I would say this, have a blast this summer. Mm -hmm. Have a great time. Hang out with good people, do good things, all of that stuff, but just have fun. You've got a break right now in between a weird school ending and probably a weird school beginning. And so don't just be lazy. Do fun things. Be a part of people's lives. Call somebody and say, let's go get a hamburger. Um, get some of your friends from church together and have them over to your, your house to, you know, watch a movie or, or play basketball or whatever you like to do. So you are in a very fun time of your life. So I would say have a lot of fun this summer. And then secondly, I'd say on a deeper level, that's kind of the, hey, go get them at level. On a deeper level, I would say um, read your Bible every day. You know, mm. you know, every day, open it up and just read a little bit. You've got the time now. You're not rushing off to school at 730 in the morning. You don't have practices and band and drama rehearsals and all that stuff you you got the time so now take the time to just spend five ten minutes let it grow and open up your bible and if you have a blast and you read your bible it's gonna be a great summer that's you great sleep all day and mope around and never get around anything it's just gonna be it's gonna evaporate um and so so that's what i would encourage you to do let me ask you a follow-up to that question that question um you You've lived a lot of years as a, as a, as a believer in Jesus, um, and there's different ways to, to read your Bible. And I know we have the Moment Devotional, which kind of gives you a daily. It's kind of, it's built in for you. I'm thankful for that. Uh, what are some different ways that you've chosen to do that kind of daily reading? Are you planning out something? Are you doing devotionals? Or what's? Yeah, that's a great question. I typically let it be really loose because so much of my life is preparing for a message, yes. which is that click, 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 click more so so that, now that's not everybody's life that's just my life but what i would say is do things that mix it up a little bit for example for years i read a chapter a day i would just i would not i was disciplined and i would read a chapter in the morning a chapter at night um and that was great and then i got where i was just trying to finish the chapter and then now i may take a verse or two and just really think about it i may um I journal some but the, the principles that you always want in there, you always want a time of prayer and you always want a time with your, I mean, I think literal Bible open I and mean, yeah, we can get on our phone, but man, when I'm looking on my phone, it's real easy to click over to social media or see a text come in. So the, the, the pillars are your literally physical Bible and prayer. And then you can add in journaling. You can add in your AirPods and listen to some music. Um, you can go on a prayer walk. Uh, you don't even have to, do it out loud. You can just kind of be in your mind thinking, praying for things as you go. So just mix it up, but, but it's best to mix it up once you've gotten the discipline. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like major league baseball hitters, you know, they do their bats all crazy and all that because they're that good. Right. right? But if you in there and try, you're doing all this, you're going to strike out. Yep. It's your stance, get ready, watch the ball swing, do the thing. And then as you get better, you can start mixing it up a little bit. So good. That's first, really good. first time ever moving your bat in Bible reading has been put in the same sentence, but <laughs> hopefully it helps. I'm with you. We got the announcement that the MLB is coming back for like 60 games. So I'm, I'm totally with you. Excited about it. That's awesome. Okay. Well, let me ask you some lightning round questions. Just a couple of fun ones before we wrap up. First one, okay. just it's obvious. Who's your favorite student minister? You know, I think we know who the answer is. So just, <laughs> you know, <what> I mean? <laughs> oh, that's funny. Okay. So, Coke or Pepsi? Coke. Coke, okay. Um, sure. Popeyes or Chick-fil-A? Chick-fil-A. Oh, that's a, that's a good one. Okay, all right. Um, Astros or Rockets? I, I heard that question was coming, so I wore this hat for 
reason. You're prepared. You're prepared. Okay. I'm nervous. Last question. If you could take your family on a dream vacation, money's no object, where would you go? I think I would go to Sydney, Australia um, to see that that beautiful opera house. That's kind of the famous picture on whatever that bay mm -hmm. is. I think that would be where I would go. I've never been to Australia. And I think that would be a really cool place uh, to, to cool city to see. That seems like a neat one. That sounds fun. There's some good surfing out there. I don't, I'm not a good surfer, but I would try. I know. I've been, uh, my daughter is a good surfer and really? she's been trying to teach me. Yeah, she is actually really good and has a couple boards. And, and so when we go to Galveston, I've actually got where I can get up and surf uh, now. I know. Isn't that crazy? I'm not, I don't always get up, but she always gets up. But yeah. My, my wife is going to want to know when Valerie is in Galveston next because she is big on surfing. So just give us the heads okay. up and Christy will be there. Okay, that's cool. That's it's awesome. Cool. Well, Pastor Greg, thank you so much. I know that you're getting ready for sabbatical, and we're just so thankful for your leadership and even just taking the time. I know you got a lot going on and quarantine craziness, but thank you for your leadership through this funny season, and thank you for speaking right to our hearts. Yeah, well, I love you guys and gals, and Sienna is such an amazing thing, and God's doing so many great things, and it's an honor to be your pastor as a student ministers and Pastor Malcolm as well, of course. And, and Mark, just thanks for all you do and your, your family and your commitment, and your love for these students. And we just, we love you and you're doing a great job. So just keep it up. All right. Well, thank you, Pastor Greg. Okay.